Welcome back to Big Dan's Air Guns Reviews. Today, as we alluded to in our last review of the Kamita 100, we're going to be looking at its bigger brother, the Kamita 300. As always, we're going to go through the rifle's overall features, handling characteristics and performance, both through the chronograph and downrange, and then towards the end of the video, we'll come up with our final verdict and see just what we think of the gun. And as always, we're going to come up with what we like and what we don't like, as, as we always say, no rifle is perfect. I will say though, a massive thank you to ASI for sending us this rifle for review. I've been wanting to get this one done for a hell of a long time simply because of the design of it. It really is a pretty looking thing, it's got to be said. So let's carry on with the review and as always we'll start off with features. Okay so features, what do you get with your Kamita 300? Well as always we start off at the rear of the gun. You've got a rubber recoil pad fitted there which is obviously always nice to have. Moving slightly further along, you've got a nicely figured cheek piece. Now, this is a Monte Carlo style cheek piece, but as some of them, or some of the Monte Carlo designs go, this one is still very, very, very friendly to lefties. Um, you haven't got any sharp edges or anything on the other side. You can literally put it to your shoulder, and I don't think that's gonna give you any real issues at all. It is granted more aimed at right-handed shooters, as you can see, but it's definitely, in fact, I'll get up and just, it's better off if I show you, actually. If you take a look, you can see it's a bit smooth on the right hand side, but I definitely don't think any lefty is going to have any issues with that at all, which is always good news. Moving slightly further up, you can see we have got the manual safety. Again, that's something we'll talk about when it comes to the handling section. And slightly further down, we have got, which is, I th you don't see it often, I think it might be just simply unique to Kamita, a dot style checkering pattern that they've got around the grip. But again, we'll talk about that a bit later on. Uh, you can see the two-stage trigger here. The thing that I'm very happy to mention with this is it is a all-metal trigger, and even the trigger guard itself is metal. Now, we do get a bit finicky about that on this channel because I do think plastic's a bit of a cop-out. Moving slightly further along, obviously we've got a spring in here somewhere. This isn't a gas ram. And one thing I will mention is the bluing on this is absolutely fabulous. It really is. Slightly further up, we have got the fiber optic micrometer sights. And further along from that, we do have, as you can see there, the hooded sight with a little fiber optic insert in there as well. So you can do some shooting in lower light conditions without losing your sights, shall we say. Other things I'm gonna mention is just like the Kamita 100, and as with most Kamita rifles, this one does have the cold hammer forge barrel as well, which is always a nice thing to have, but we'll see just how good that actually is when we get to the accuracy section. Slightly uh, further back or away from the gun, what I will say is thanks to ASI and the sheer amount of confidence they have in these products, this like the Kamita 100 has a lifetime guarantee. So your pretty much, well, as the name implies, you're covered for a hell of a long time. We'll put it that way. And as we always say, it is such a shame that more companies don't put this on their guns. But unfortunately, it is what it is. But I give massive props to ASI for offering that with these rifles. But that is pretty much it when it comes to features of the Kamita 300. It's a pretty interesting gun, it must be said. But I wonder, how heavy is it on the scales? Let's crack them out and find out. Okay, so she's on the scales and it comes out at a cool 6.94 pounds, so almost seven pounds in weight. Um, so overall, it puts it in the heavier light rifle bracket, which I'm now going to invent. So when it comes to scope choice and such, um, you're pretty free to put almost anything you want on this and hopefully it still shouldn't be too heavy of a gun or the gun can also be used by say, teenagers getting into the sport or, or just newcomers to the sport and such that don't really want anything too substantial. So, so far things are looking very, very good. However, let's chuck a scope on there and let's talk about handling because even if it's light, it can still feel like absolute cack in the shoulder, especially if it's balanced badly. So let's move on. Okay, so handling, what do we think of the Kamita 300? Now, I am already a very happy bunny, um, and I'm also very impressed with this dot style checkering that they use in the Kamita rifles, because that is actually really, really nice, and I've not experienced it before. Um, you can see here, obviously you've got the dot pattern here, and it's the same on the other side. Now, what I like about it is you can feel it inside your palm, but the best bit is your fingers, I mean, I have got a bit longer fingers maybe than some, but, Apologies if you can't quite see that right. I mean, if I twisted my wrist anymore, it'd be broken. Uh, but you can see my fingers are resting pretty much directly on where they have placed that pattern. Again, it's only a silly thing, but it's really, really nice. It fits me beautifully. And that dot pattern as well is deep. It's not like some of the cheaper guns you see on the market where you can see the checkering, but you cannot feel it. With this, you can definitely feel it. There, that is gonna give you some traction. Um, let's talk a little bit now about the shot cycle and such and the balance 
on top of, whoops, through the pallet, on top of that, the safety. I'm telling you, what it is, we've got a rare sunny day here in uh, Essex at this moment in time, and my brain is fried by it. It's not used to it. Um, but let's talk about safety, trigger, and overall handling. So safety first, I've just flicked it into safe. I really, really like this system. Now you guys will know that I, I don't even mind an automatic safety. I know they're a bit Marmite. I love this. Yes, it's manual, but it's so easy to access. Hopefully, if I put it like this, you might be able to see it, and I apologize if the scope's in the way. You can see you've got a white indicator there for safe, and the red indicator hopefully in there for fire. What I love about that is the fact that your thumb is resting right next to it anyway. So you can so quickly say, it's on safe now, rabbit appears, you're ready to go. Or he, if he gets back in the hedge, as they usually do, they'll run off with the slightest little glint and they're gone. You whack it back into safe, just like that. That is a fantastic system. It really, really is. Uh, let's talk now about the trigger. So let's whack it into um, fire. Let's talk about the trigger. So bouncing off second stage there, if you can hopefully see that. And let's give it a squeeze. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, for, for what you'd still consider a budget gun, that is seriously good. Um, let me just show you. I'm gonna use my little finger like we usually do to, to uh, prove the point. Put the pellet in here, close her up. That's nice and solid as well. Um, but I'm just gonna show you here, that's a little finger. And hopefully you can see second stage. And what I love about it is that there is no creep at all and it, it fires. And the second stage is not heavy either. Watch this. Little finger. Other point I'm gonna make is, did you see then how little that gun recoiled despite the fact that I've got, I'm not holding it on the four stock or nothing like that. That's the other point I'm gonna make. That is a lovely thing to shoot. There is very little kick to that. Granted, we don't know what power it's doing. It might only be doing about eight feet pounds. It shouldn't be. It's advertised pretty much as a full power gun, so it should be a damn sight more than that, but we'll find out later on. That has next to no kick to it whatsoever. The other thing is, obviously with a spring gun, what can put a lot of people off is the twang. This doesn't twang as such. You can hear there's a tiny little bit of spring noise, but it's quick. I think the lock time on this does feel lightning fast. And if you have a listen, safety is off. I'm putting it right up to the mic so the odds are against it. You have a listen to this and tell me if that sounds like it's gonna get on your nerves. Ready? <coughs> and that's it, off it goes. You've not really got any of, like some springs can reverberate, can't they? You'll get a ping afterwards. None of that with this. That is a sweet little gun. It really is. Handling wise, I'm a little bit in love, as you can tell. In fact, the other thing you might have noticed is we've only put a smaller scope on there. That's not to cheat with the handling or nothing like that. The reason for that is simply because I look at this gun and it reminds me of when I was a teenager and first picked up the air rifle and started shooting. Um, we'd come back from school, dad would be doing the barbecue, something like that, and I'd have a milk carton in, we had a dry ditch, and I'd have the milk carton in the ditch. And if I could shoot that milk carton, I was a marksman. And it was done with a, well, a rifle like this with a scope around this size. And I think that is freaking lovely. And I'm basically a believer of use the smallest scope you can get away with. This Konus Pro 3 number 32, I'm gonna be putting this on a lot of my guns, I'll put it that way, especially ones like these, because that is bloody fantastic, it really is. Right, enough of that out of the way, let's, let's do away with that. Moving on, let's now talk about the chronograph section. So we're gonna whack that out, we're gonna uh, get some air arms pellets, put it through it, see what it does with them, and let's see if that's only kicking because it's low powered. Hmm, let's whack it out and find out. Chronograph time. Well, the 300 is prepped and ready to go. We've got the phone set up here, which will give you a live reading as to what the gun's doing per shot. And the pellets we're gonna be using, as you can see, are the Air Arms Diablo Field 16 grain pellets. Now we're gonna have 20 shots, so as you can see what you can roughly expect when the gun's taken out the box. And then a bit later on, we're gonna do another 20 shots when the rifle's been run in just that little bit more. So it'll give us a bit of an idea as to what the gun's capable of a bit later in its life, where if you decide to pick one up or what have you. So let's get to testing and let's get the show on the road.
Okay, so that's consistency testing over. I wasn't lying when I said it was still dieseling uh, a little bit, as you can see here by the uh, 1195 that we had. And I think we had another one that was a little bit higher as well. Uh, we've got 1171, we have a 1195. If I bring this up a little bit for you, you can see there, shot seven is a 1191. So it's definitely got a bit of diesel that, uh, or grease that it's got to burn through. We had a spread of 26, which even so isn't too bad, to be honest. It's about the same going off memory as the RHW, or my, I should say, HW97. I think that had a spread of about 25, 26. And I think the HW80 that we shot through the chrono, all those, well, yeah, it would have been a couple of years ago now, bloody hell. Um, yeah, a couple of years ago, we put HW80K up against the Nexus 19. I think that had a spread of about 21, 22-ish, off memory. Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong. Um, so it's not bad, I'll put it that way. It, it's, it's, hopefully, it should get a hell of a lot better once it runs in, but even out the box, the spread isn't terrible. We've got a standard deviation of 7.81 feet per second per shot, and we've got an average velocity of 564 feet per second, which comes out at around 11.3 feet pounds. So that's not too bad at all. Right then, so that's our first consistency test done. I'm now gonna have a few shots off camera at our target at 25 yards, see what it likes the most, and then see if we can film a group with it. So let's move on. Okay, so we are now at the target here. You can see it's the 25 yard mark. You can see the piece of wood back there has been obliterated where we was doing the pellet testing off screen. The other thing we did is we did set a target up and usually we don't show what we do off screen, the pellet testing and such, because who cares? We find the one that works the best and then that's it. The thing is, I, I have to show you this basically. This is the card that we used. You can see it's shotgunned, absolutely. It's, it's taken a blast from a, a, a silver pigeon or something like that. Um, you can see here, there's a scattering down here. Those are the Air Arms Diablo pellets. It didn't really like them too much. Um, it loves our WS, it would seem. You can see we've got clusters here and here, which is with the um, Super Fields. However, what it absolutely adores, which you can see there, and I'm showing you this just in case I can't replicate it on camera. Those are, if I just throw that and Ah, get them out of my pocket, which is a little bit awkward because I put it in the wrong bloody pocket. These, again. Now, they are flathead pellets, so we are going to do some longer range testing today. Hopefully, they'll be able to keep their accuracy at longer ranges, usually about 30-ish, 35 yards. They do open up a bit, but those are the RWS Meisters, and that is very impressive. There's a tiny little bit of wind today. You might be able to hear it sort of blowing. It's not much, if I'm being brutally honest, at 25 yards. I don't think that's going to make much of a difference. So... I'm really looking forward to this. We're going to have six shots, see what we can do at 25. Then after that, we'll see if we can rig something up in the wood there for 35. And then I've got something planned for 40, which hopefully we can, uh, we can get it done. Hopefully it will make up for what we couldn't do with the little Kamita 100 when we uh, tried reviewing it. So that's enough of that. And let's get to the shooting. Okay, so we're now at our 35 yard mark. If I just pan across now, you'll see that's our, where our 25 yarder is just tucked in there. And the wind has unfortunately picked up just a tiny little bit. You might hear it blowing into the mic, but we'll see what we can do. I'm gonna have a few shots off, off camera just to adjust our zero, because obviously 10 yards back, we're probably gonna have to come up just a little bit. We're gonna get that sorted out and then uh, we'll get the camera rolling and see what the gun can do in 35. So let's get to work. How's that? Not too bad at all, is it? Now, I'm going to confess, obviously, as you guys know, we did a few shots um, zero in the gun for 35 yards compared to 25. Otherwise, they could be going low, you name it, just to make sure it's just basically to make it a little bit prettier compared to what we normally do. Now, I knew at 35 yards it was going to be good. I mean, we'll talk about 25 yards first, but I knew it was going to be good, and I'll show you why in a second. 25 yards, you can see here, it was six shot cluster. And if we just get the five pence piece of truth, you can see, oh, I'll stop sliding it around. 
You can see there, it fits under the five pence piece. This, I will say, is shooting from a rest. You can see if I just move it across here, there's our Dora the Explorer backpack. Um, yeah, it's shooting from a rest, so it's not quite as um, strict, shall we say, as maybe some of the guns we've reviewed earlier in the channel, or channel's life, I should say, um, where we shot it offhand. So there is that there. So you've got the 25 yard group, fits under the five pence piece. Now the 35 yard group, I knew this was gonna be good. And the reason for that is you might have noticed if I pan up, you'll see we've got our backstop slash, well, target that was just asking for it, if I'm honest, in the background here. And this was the cluster that we shot when zeroing for 35 yards. Now, if you take a look, you can see we've got one flyer up here. You can see there's a few pellet marks when we did the testing earlier for 25 with different pellets. Look at that. I'm just about to get it on there. It's almost, I think it is a, th a five pence group, but it just, there's a lump of lead poking up here and it just will not sit on it quite properly. It's, we'll say it's almost a, a five pence group, but we've got that one flyer up there. That is mega. So when we got to the 35 group yard group on camera, I wasn't worried more for the fact that I hope the gun obviously behaves itself at this range and it does well on camera. It was a case of, I hope I behave myself and I can do that again. And I almost did, I almost did. It's not quite, if I put that on there, hang on, there's a little bit, I think on the bottom there, we've got a cover up. It's not quite five pence. So it's not quite as good as what we did on the wood, although we didn't quite get that flyer. Um, there's a bit of a, you can see the little bit more vertical spread. Could be me, could be the gun, don't know. But I don't think anyone's gonna complain about that. I mean, look, at 35 yards granted off of a rest, that's not bad at all. And again, we're using the flathead Meister pellets, which as everyone will probably tell you, flatheads, they don't tend to do as well as the range increases. So if maybe we have a hunt around and find some domes it likes, it could even be even tighter than that. That is bloody good. That is seriously good. What I will say is the rifle shooting off of a rest, a lot of the lighter spring guns do this, so it's not really any cause for concern. Um, a lot of the um, lighter guns off of a rest, they do have a little bit more bounce. Um, usually the heavier guns, they can handle the recoil a lot better. Um, this one is a little bit the same. It's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be actually. It's still quite smooth to shoot, but there is a dear little bit more recoil with it off of a rest than what you get in the shoulder, because in the shoulder, like we said earlier, there's almost nothing there. There's a tiny little bit of vertical movement. That's it. The sights pretty much stay almost on target. Um, yeah, so off of a rest, it's a little bit jumpier, but I think the thing is the lock time on this is so fast and you, you can almost hear it when we pulled the trigger. Hopefully you can hear it anyway. When the rifle was up to my chest, that, <coughs> it, that pellet is just on its way. Um, but accuracy wise, I am a happy chappy. Now what we're gonna, well, very happy chappy. What we're gonna try now is it's a bit experimental, it might not work. I also am probably going to melt to death because it's about 25 degrees today and it in quite includes me wearing a big black coat. Um, what I'm gonna try to do is we're actually gonna set our metal knockdown targets at our um, 40 yard mark. And we're gonna see if we can, we're gonna attach the microphones to the target so you can hear that ping when we get a hit. We'll have a walk up to it when we're done. Um, and hopefully the camera should rest in the breast pocket on the coat that we're wearing. So it'll almost look very similar to, if it goes according to plan, it'll look similar to sort of something like a first person shooter or something like that, like on the your Xboxes, Playstations, all that sort of thing. So we're gonna do something a little bit different today and hopefully it'll be a little bit more fun. Um, but again, if it doesn't work, uh, we will have to go old school with it and simply put the camera next to the target and then you'll see it as we hit it. But we're gonna do it at the 40 yard mark and we've got a little station there that I'm just gonna stand in that and then fire down range. Well, you, if it works, you'll see it on camera anyway. So sorry to start uh, rambling on, but yeah, if you notice something's a bit different, that's why. Right then, so let's get our metal target uh, set up. We'll do a deal a little bit more zero testing because obviously we are five yards further back and we do want to hit them if we can. And um, we'll see what the gun can do.
So that's accuracy testing out the way. So now we've got to talk about our final consistency test. And as you can see, the gun is a lot better than when we first took it out the box when we did our first chronograph test. Um, if we go back, actually, just to remind ourselves, we had a standard deviation of 7.81, which is a tad on the high side, but roughly to be expected for a, a gun that's still dieseling. We got a spread of 26 and an average power of 564. So if we go back, 564 FPS. Now we've got a spread of 16, so we're 10 better off than what we was before. Average uh, feet per second is 566, which works out to about 11.38 feet pounds. So she's definitely on the right track. Like we said, as you can see, the spread and such has gone down. Standard deviation, 4.34, which is a hell of a lot better uh, than what it was before. Um, Overall, I think she's running in quite nicely. I mean, bearing in mind, like we may have already said, it's not even had a full ton of pellets through it yet. It's probably had about 200-ish pellets. Um, I'll put it this way. The Meister Klugans, you know, we use them on the other review. And as you can hear, there's still a fair few in there. But that's consistency out the way. As we can see, she's got a ton of power and, or the right amount of power, we should say. Um, but she's got a nice amount of power and consistency is definitely pretty damn good. So. Let's move on to the final verdict and see what we really think of the Kometa 300. So overall, what do we think of the little Kometa 300? Well, I'll tell you the truth. I went into this review blind as we've not been dealing with the Kometa rifles for long at all. So I didn't quite know what to expect. Given the pricing at 195 pounds, I was expecting something that would perform admirably, but would feel like a budget rifle. Not that there's anything wrong with that. In fact, you'll know that I love the cheaper rifles, especially when they punch up, but usually you can feel when a rifle has been built to a budget. Perhaps the woodwork will be a bit thin, or the lockup won't feel the most positive, or there'll be a bloody huge lump of plastic on the end, which is frankly a trend that needs to die. The Kometa 300 has none of that. Well, besides a bit of plastic on the end. It shoulders beautifully with a very solid stock, and although it's a bit sparse, that dot-style checkering is fantastic. The lockup gives a lovely and solid kafunk, and the cocking action is very positive. On top of this, the bluing is brilliant, unlike some of the cheaper rifles where it can look a bit dull or grey. The trigger is a non-adjustable unit, but out of the box it's fantastic. Hopefully you could see me earlier breaking it with just my little finger, and there's pretty much zero creep. Something that can't be said for many of the other budget springers on the market. The best part of all, of course, is the accuracy. And as for all of the Kometa rifles, the 300 comes with a cold hammer forged barrel. It's safe to say that it certainly does the business, especially when even I can shoot well with it. Freestanding, no less. Thanks to his lightning fast lock time, I didn't find it particularly hold sensitive neither. It does have a bit of kick if you bench rest it, but it's certainly no more than most other lightweight brake barrels. When it's shouldered and palmed, however, she's an absolute peach, with minimal recoil and no real nasty tendencies. So what's my verdict? Well, I think you can probably guess, but you know I'm a sucker for springers, especially those that punch up. So now imagine my thoughts when it not only punches up, but also comes with a superb barrel, fantastic looks, and a lifetime warranty to back it up. If you think it sounds like one will be going in my cabinet, it's already in there. Thanks ever so much for watching. We're not sure if we'll be reviewing the Kamita Phoenix 400s next or the Kamita Lynx V5 TCP rifle. Why not let us know what you'd like to see in the comments and we'll get straight to it. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you again next time.